Hello. Welcome to workflow class four, part one. The very first question of this workflow interview question answer series is, what is the use of form step types? So form step type we mainly use for creating the customized screen. Okay. So if you want to create your own screen for approval purpose, for editing the data, for displaying the data, and for, you know, the, for example, see the fourth point over here. Very important point. It is not necessary to have the GUI installed in your end system for the purpose of working with the form data. So this can be integrated with the browser as well. So this is the important point with the form step type of the workflow. If you want me to explain more about the form step type, you can see the option over here, how it looks like, right click over here, click on this create button and see this form step type, you get it over there. Here you will get the different option, approve, display, edit, right? So directly it will take you to the screen where approve or reject option you will be able to see. And also if you design your form in a way that if you want to edit, you can design, you can select this option and you can design the form it will allow you to change the data and after changing the data it will also allow you to save and all so it's a kind of uh, you know uh, module pool programming where it will give you the option to design a screen where based upon your requirement you can define the button you know you can define the element over there and you can use in the workflow. So it's very convenient in case if you are willing to create your own, you know, uh, customized screen. <laughs> Another question, what is the use of a wait step? So in workflow, we have a wait step. So when we use the wait step, that can be one interview question. So answer for this uh, question is, for example, let's suppose you have created a sales order and you have sent it for approval. Meanwhile, the creator changes the data in the sales order. So what should happen in that case? Your previous workflow should be completed and a new workflow should be initialized, right? This is what it should happen. So how you can achieve this kind of scenario? So this can be achieved with the help of wait a step. Try to understand about wait a step with the below diagram, below flowchart. Anyway, for wait a step, see here, you are getting the different condition, wait for condition, wait for local event, wait for event by using workflow. So wait step can be used for meeting some sort of condition for local event and the event received from another workflow, right? The wait for event by using uh, means by, by outside event, in fact. So this is the different options we can have for 
purpose of weight. Now let's go to understand the scenario where we can use the weight step. So see here, sales order got created. Then sales order triggered the approval workflow. After triggering of approval workflow, two parallel process starts with the help of fog. One each, it's going to send for approval in user inbox. And when it will be sent for approval in the user inbox, it will be getting the two options, either approved or reject. So approver either will approve or it will reject. Then the second option over here, you can create a wait step to receive any changes in the sales order. So two parallel steps we have defined. Now, someone changed the, someone changed or let's suppose creator changed that particular sales order. So in that case, your wait step, the event you have defined over here, that will be triggered and your workflow will be cancelled. So you have defined the step when this event is triggered, cancel the workflow with the help of process control. Now, once you cancel the workflow or approval or rejection happened, in that case, your SO approval workflow will get complete, right? So that is the desired activity it should be, right? So because sales order in between got changed. Now, again, we, again, uh, you know, this, this will be your SO approval workflow will be completed and new workflow will be triggered again because the creator has done some changes. So this can be one good scenario for demonstrating the wait step. Hope it's clear for everyone. Now, one very important question in the interview, what is deadline monitoring? So deadline monitoring is nothing but, let's suppose you have defined some, uh, let's suppose you have sent some work item to approver inbox to approve, right? And he is not present there in the office or he is not available to approve then how much time it should be there waiting for the purpose of approval for approval, right? So it is not like that uh, if approval mm, is not being happened in one day or two day or three days, it will wait for unlimited time. Generally, it should not happen like that, right? It should wait for one to three days if it is not present uh, if approval does not come, then in that case, it should automatically go to the next level approver. And, uh, you know, again, let's suppose next level approver is not present over there, then it should go to the third level approval or some notification or some automatically, let's, or also we can define that uh, if it is missing the deadline, then it should automatically get approved. So such kind of situation you can define in the workflow if it is feasible, right? So feasible, why I'm telling if it is feasible because everywhere you cannot put the deadline kind of stuff because something is, let's suppose very critical, maybe in that case, automatic approval will not work, but the place where like, uh, you know, in some scenario, uh, where you think that, okay, the it can skip the first level approval if he is not available for one day or two days, then automatically the work item can get uh, cancelled and the next, uh, you know, work item will be created and will go to the next level approval for approval, right? So this is what the deadline monitoring we have. So where you can see the deadline monitoring, see 
you have the four option latest end so when the work item is created you know when it can be end so that particular point of time you can mention requested a start right let's suppose work item got created now but you want to start maybe after two hours or something like that latest start okay so you you can define the timeline to start uh, you can define the timeline for the latest start again requested end right so this is very frequently used this latest end so it will you can define like wait for two days three days if he's not available then end this and move further like that so if you want to see this option in the system see here latest for all the task you know whenever you will be creating some background activity or foreground activity you know mostly we use such sort of uh, stuff for the user decision steps right or if you have created some dialogue uh, or, or if you have created some background steps so it, it depends like scenario to scenario when you want to use this deadline monitoring let's see here you have the latest end requested start latest start requested end so all these four tabs comes under the deadline monitoring okay now another point over here is the deadline monitoring it does not happen automatically some background job runs automatically on a re regular interval so that background job in fact gets scheduled in transaction you know aswu3 is the place where you go and configure so if you see here that schedule background job for the workflow deadline monitoring right so this should be in green mark if it is not in green mark you will have to you know execute and you have to click on the save and schedule so see this uh, is the name of this background job for work item deadline monitoring is wwdhex is the background job name so let's uh, put this this name is not correct this is the correct name is wwdhx right from here directly you can find it out background job report and this is like manually if you want to run the report name so but one thing just see this is the t code so swwa is the t code this is the job name and the report name if you want to execute this this is the report name okay let's copy correctly and i will put it over here so t code you can see is ww a you can verify by putting it and you can see that you are able to see the same screen so this is fine this i you know uh, i didn't see this t code but this was for t code so t code is correct job name i have put it up over here and report name is this one so this is the meaning of deadline monitoring that you are defining the timeline for latest end requested start latest start requested end you know for the work item and uh, that final timeline you know the uh, defining that final time is timeline is known as the deadline monitoring and these are the tabs now what is the t code to create the event without writing any code so see sometimes what happens that we have to trigger the workflow without 
writing means without using the function module or if you or let's suppose uh, you have to pass some parameter uh, uh, when you try to trigger the workflow through the event so in that case you have the two option either you write some code or another thing you have this beautiful transaction SWUE very useful transaction slash and SWUE you can put and you can see that you can get the business object and class option if you get the class uh, you you can have the object type over here you can give the name of the class and you can give the name of the event right so if you have some event and all you can you know, choose like this if you have the business object you can again choose the business object type and you can choose the business uh, the event whatever and with this business object and this event you can simply you know you can of course you will have to pass some key and all once you pass this key and all and if you click on this create event if some workflow is uh, linked with this business object and event then it will trigger of course the linkage should be there what mandatory linkage is required in SWE2 that business object and the required workflow linkage should be there okay so that you can come and check it out over here see so for this business object you have this event over there you have this event and this receiver type so under the receiver type you should have this configuration maintained then only your workflow will be triggered so this is again one important question that uh, which uh, means what are the uh, place where configuration is maintained if a workflow should be triggered uh, with some business object type and its event right so in SWE2 this entry should be maintained if it is not maintained how you can maintain it by you can click on this new entry and you can give all the required detail over there okay and also you will have to go into the uh, you know the workflow and there under the start uh, uh, event you know in version independent tab the the setting should be there right so that part i will show you in the coming session that will be also part of the question so we will see in more detail so swue we have seen 